Greetings everyone. A very warm welcome to all of you on the special lecture on International Day for Human Rights. What are human rights? This is a very important and pertinent issue that we would be discussing today at length. The lecture would also focus on the relevance of UDHR that is Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Then several human rights committees as well as the history of the International Human Rights Day. A human right is something to which all people are entitled such as the right to vote, the right to education, the right to express views freely and the right to life and so on and so forth. The UN states that human rights are those which are inherent in our nature and without which we cannot exist as human beings. Now let us discuss as to how is the day celebrated. Traditionally, on December 10th, the five yearly United Nations Prize in the field of human rights and Nobel Peace Prize are awarded. Several governmental and non governmental organizations organize and host special events on December 10th every year. But before we discuss at length the history of the world, let us ask a question, do we all have equal human rights? Things that many of us take for granted such as the right to an education, the right to receive medical care or the freedom to practice our religion are not equally available to all those living in this mortal world. Human rights are recognized as fundamental by the UN and feature prominently in the preamble of the Charter of the United Nations. Coming to the issue of history of the United Nations, the United Nations or UN officially came into existence on October 24, 1925 by the end of Second World War. The purposes of the United Nations were not one but several and the most important one was to maintain international peace and security, to develop friendly relations among nations, to cooperate in solving international, economic, social, cultural as well as humanitarian problems. Then also to promote respect for human rights and fundamental freedoms. Also, one uh, uh, another very important purpose was to harmonize the actions of nations in attaining all these ends. So, therefore, there had to be uh, a continuous synergy in both the uh, in both the means as well as the ends. When we talk of universal declaration of human rights, then during World War II that is between 1939 to 1945, there were so many incidents that had taken place. Uh, millions of soldiers and civilians were killed as a result of military combat, occupation as well as the horrors of concentration camps. After the end of the war, the UN was created with the aim of securing peace and justice in the world through international cooperation. So, one thing that became clearly visible post Second World War was that if peace had to be established, it could not be the result of efforts of one particular country. It had to be a united effort and the entire world had to participate in that endeavor. So, Universal Declaration of Human Rights UDHR was created, passed and adopted by those nations 
who were part of UN in 1948. So, UDHR is a set of universally accepted and observed basic human rights so that people would never again have to experience the kind of abuses and excesses that they had suffered during the course of Second World War or even uh, before that. So, this was the first time that an international document was created and it was also agreed to by the states, uh, by different countries of the world and uh, Eleanor Roosevelt chaired the committee that drafted and approved the UDHR. Now, coming to several rights that were listed in UDHR, they were divided into two basic categories that is the civil and political rights on the one hand and on the other hand the socio-economic and cultural rights. So, this was the kind of a broad uh, division of rights that was attempted. The human rights originally listed in 1948 have been clarified and expanded uh, henceforth and the list of rights now includes protections for children in armed conflicts, compensation for victims, rights of persons with disabilities, protection against discrimination uh, uh, and also discrimination based on HIV or AIDS. Uh, also, there is now an insistence on enforced or involuntary disappearances, then protections for the environment, indigenous people, tribals, migrant workers, uh, peacekeeping operations, then prosecution for the sale of children, terrorism, war crimes and many more were added to the original list of rights. Now, coming to the issue of civil and political rights. What does this include as per the UDHR list? So, it included right to life and liberty, right to freedom of movement, right to equality before the law, freedom of opinion and expression, freedom of assembly and association, freedom of thought, conscience, religion, right to be recognized as a person before the law. Also, right to presumption of innocence until proven guilty, right to appeal a conviction, freedom of choice in whom a per person marries, uh, also freedom from any kind of discrimination. So, the list was uh, quite comprehensive. Now, coming to the socio-economic and cultural rights, this included rights for individuals uh, like a right to self-determination, equal opportunity for advancement, right to equal pay for equal work, right to wages sufficient to support a minimum standard of living, uh, also right to paid or compensated for maternity leave, right to form unions, uh, right to strike, right to free primary education, right to accessible education at all levels as well as freedom from exploitation of children. However, uh, we all uh, can see and look around us and we would realize that not everyone has equal access to all these rights. So, most of these rights have remained on paper for the poor and the marginalized. The rich and the powerful of course, have free access and easier access to all these rights. Now, in order to enforce uh, this list of rights, several committees were also formed known as human rights committees. So, for example, there was a committee on economic, social and cultural rights, which was the body of independent experts that monitored the implementation of the international covenant on economic, social and cultural rights. The committee was established in May 1985 to 
carry out the monitoring of these rights. The committee helped in protecting the full range of human rights that required that were required to lead a free, safe, secure and healthy life. Then another very important committee that one can talk of was the El Committee for Elimination of Discrimination Against Women. It was created in 1979 with the adoption of the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. This committee was the first comprehensive legally binding international instrument prohibiting and obligating governments to take affirmative action to advance gender equality. Hence, uh, it continues to uh, function in that direction. The convention provides the basis for realizing equality between women and men through ensuring women's equal access to uh, and also equal opportunities in public as well as private life including the right to vote, uh, right to stand for election as well as gaining access to education, health, employment etc. So while there were so there have been so many committees and so many rights but still there are gaps between what is there on paper and what exists in reality. Now at this point of time, I would like to draw your attention to the historical genesis of human rights. The origins of human rights can be traced to 539 BC as has been done by several scholars and historians when the troops of Cyrus the Great conquered Babylon. So Cyrus freed the slaves and declared that all people had the right to choose their own religion and established racial equality. These and other principles were recorded on baked clay cylinder known as Cyrus Cylinder whose provisions served as inspiration for the first four articles of the UDHR that is Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Another very important milestone was the Magna Carta. It was definitely an important cornerstone in human rights history uh, because with the promulgation of Magna Carta in 1215, uh, a concept of rule of law was introduced though it was still in its raw form and the basic idea of defined rights and liberties to all persons which offers protection from arbitrary prosecution and incarceration was uh, discussed. So, this was definitely uh, a, a great achievement for humanity. Before the Magna Carta, the rule of law now considered as a key principle for good governance in any modern democratic society was perceived as a divine justice. So, it was believed that uh, you know if there was rule of law then it was a matter of divine justice and not something that humans were entitled to and it was to be solely distributed by the ruler, by the monarch or the king. Uh, so, for example, by King John of England. Uh, the English Magna Carta of 1215 that was granted by King John uh, is very much significant in the development of human rights. The overreaching theme of Magna Carta was protection against arbitrary acts by the king and this was the most important change that was going to come about firstly in England and then later on it was going to uh, also influence other European nations. So now land and property 
could no longer be seized. Judges had to know and respect laws. There could no more be arbitrary handling of cases. Taxes could not be imposed without common counsel. A Magna Carta also introduced the concept of jury trial in clause 39, which protected against arbitrary arrest as well as imprisonment and hence was definitely a step forward uh, as far as human rights were concerned. Magna Carta also set forth the principle that the power of king was not absolute. So, Magna Carta was later converted to Bill of Rights in 1689. The evolution of the concepts that were expressed by the Magna Carta uh, is represented by the English Bill of Rights. It was an act signed into a law in 1689 by William III and Mary II who became co-rulers in England after the overthrow of King James II. The bill outlined specific constitutional and civil rights and gave parliament power over the monarchy. So, henceforth it was not the monarchy which was going to call the shots all the time and rather parliament was equally becoming important and powerful. Many experts regard the English Bill of Rights as the primary law that set the stage for a constitutional monarchy in England. It is also credited as being an inspiration for the US Bill of Rights uh, that was introduced in 1791. Next very important milestone was the French Declaration of the Rights of Man in 1789, which happened as a result of the French Revolution. So, the representatives of the French people organized as a national assembly, believing that the ignorance, neglect or contempt of the rights of man are the sole cause of public calamities and corruption and misrule of governments declared that they were determined to set forth in a solemn declaration the natural, unalienable and sacred rights of man in order that this declaration being constantly before all the members of the social body shall remind them continually of their rights and duties in order that the acts of the legislative power as well as those of the executive power may be compared at any moment with the objects and purposes of all political institutions and hence had to be respected and the grievances of the citizens also had to be taken into account in order to ensure happiness of all the subjects. So, this was very important that now happiness and satisfaction of only a handful few of only the elite and the powerful was no longer called for or considered as important. What was far more important was the happiness of all, so society at large which would include the poor, the marginalized and the subaltern groups. Therefore, the National Assembly recognized and proclaimed in the presence and under the auspices of the Supreme Being. Under the declaration, rights of men and citizens included guarantee of equality, liberty, free speech and laid down that law was the expression of the general will. However, women were still not considered as worthy of getting a mention in this statement. Now, uh, when we talk about the declaration of rights of man and of the citizen that came to be adopted in 1789 by French National Assembly, 
it represented one of the basic charters of human liberties containing the principles that inspired the French Revolution. The basic value introduced by the declaration was that all men are born and remain free and equal in rights which were specified as the rights of liberty, private property, the inviolability of the person and resistance to oppression. All citizens were equal before the law and were to have the right to participate in legislative uh, in legislation directly or indirectly and no one was to be arrested without a judicial order. So, freedom of religion, speech were safeguarded within the bounds of public law and order. Private property was given the status of an inviolable right which could be taken by the state only if an indemnity were given and offices and positions were also open to all. So, one can say that uh, this was something like a first generation rights movement where there were rights uh, of political concerns, civil and political rights came to be defined and uh, they recognized the existence of certain things that the all powerful rulers should not be able to do away with and that people should have some influence over the policies governing them. So, the two central ideas were those of personal liberty and of protecting the individuals against excesses by the state and the rulers. Basic human dignity was what one was now emphasizing on more and more. Most of the policies excluded women, people of color and members of certain socio-religious, economic and political groups. Prime examples to overcome this situation are represented by the efforts during 19th and early 20th centuries to prohibit the slave trade and to limit the horrors of war. Thank you all.